for you. Hello and welcome to the video. In this video guide I'll be taking you through all of the steps required to understand and brew my very tried and tested recipe which I call the Smoke and Rye IPA. This recipe has been tweaked and developed over time in keeping with my channel's recipe policy and is only shared now that it is up to standard. I will explain the recipe and demonstrate all of the steps before then finishing up by showing you the end beer and giving my tasted notes. So let's get started. Here is a sneak preview of this beer's vital statistics which I will explain fully shortly. This IPA offers just under 7% ABV and a very interesting flavour profile that balances smoked and rye flavours with hoppy goodness. This recipe, like all of my shared recipes, is written by me and can be found in full within the video's description, which is underneath the video window when viewed on a desktop computer. Here you will also find a link to the recipe in full on Brewfather which can be used free of charge with some restrictions. Your first steps with my recipe should be to convert the recipe before ordering in your ingredients. I have an easy guide to doing this with Brewfather on my channel as shown on screen now. Within this video this recipe is being brewed using a Bruzella 65 to the volume of 19 litres or approximately 5 US liquid gallons, but as part of the conversion process this can be scaled and shaped to suit your own brewing system and volume requirements. Recipe conversion is an essential part of the process for the intended results. Do note that this applies to all recipes you will obtain from others, not just with mine. For the very best results you should plan your water profile ahead. If you are a beginner then you will be forgiven for not looking at water early on, but I would really recommend getting into it once you have some experience under your belt. Water profiles for hoppy beers like this one can certainly make a marked difference as they will accentuate the hops, which in a beer like this one are designed to shine pretty bright. Having said this, some may prefer to use a balanced profile for this particular recipe which will consider both the hops and grain flavours equally. I have tried both the hoppy and balanced water profiles from Brewfather with this recipe and my taste buds preferred the hoppy Brewfather profile. Let's now get on to the brew. My strike water has been preheated to the first mash step of 67 degrees Celsius or 150 degrees Fahrenheit and I am now starting to add this recipe's grain bill gradually stirring as I go. By using this slightly higher mash temperature we are creating a wort that is not quite as fermentable compared to the lower mash range temperatures. This results in a slightly fuller bodied beer. With all the grain now added and stirred in fully, it was now time to start the mash. You will notice that as this mash progresses, the wort's colour is going to start becoming darker. So let's now look at the recipe and explain why, and everything else that is relevant to this one. As discussed already, we have a 6.7% estimated ABV, and this is balanced by a pretty high IBU of 70, to give us a BUGU ratio of 1.11, which is certainly higher than average IPA's bitterness. All too often recipes of this type fall short where the flavours of the smoked malt in particular and hops do not sit well together. I have found that by adding rye and having a higher bitterness everything works very nicely together as a package. So certainly this is not a sweet beer but the perception of this added bitterness is not as high as you would expect within the full mix of this recipe. In terms of the grain bill we have 50% Pilsner malt as our base malt. This allows other fermentables to shine cleaner and more brightly along with the hops. The Munich Light at 24% is there as a balancer providing some malty sweetness. Then at 15% the smoke ball is there offering a beechwood almost bacon like flavour that is complemented by the Cara Rye at 4%. The Cara Rye is a caramel rye malt that adds in a complex rye character along with some darker colour and hues. It also provides some extra residual sweetness along with the caramel flavour. Then at 5% we must not forget the wheat malt which is used here for head formation and retention along with some extra texture. Then lastly at 2% we have chocolate malt which adds to the brown colour further and adds a splash of chocolate and coffee flavouring into the mix. After the mash it was time for a quick sparge. Once the grain basket was lifted I then set the Brewzilla's controller to start heading for a boil. Let's now look at the boil stage for this one, which was pretty steamy for me as you will see shortly. This boil is at a modern boil time of 30 minutes, which is especially great for a recipe of this type, as less malt flavour will be boiled off, as well as saving you some time. Always good. 
At the start of the boil I added Chinookers the Bittering Hop which is commonly used in West Coast style IPAs. Within this recipe the Chinook will contribute its well known spice and pine into the background. Then we have three additions of Centennial at 15, 10 and 5 minutes within the boil. Centennial is an awesome hop that has a uniquely powerful and pungent flavours and aromas that are citrus and floral. Then to turbocharge this further there is a Centennial hop stand after the boil at 80 degrees Celsius or 176 degrees Fahrenheit. To cool this down quickly after the boil I used the Scylla Chiller from Jaded Brewing which with some fast stirring dropped the temperature in almost no time at all. I then used Kegland's Hopback, the hop missile for this stand to maximise the hop addition's flavour and aroma. I simply love to be close to the exit of this while this is in progress as you get a very nice hop aroma build up as the wort is ridge circulated through the hops. After cooling the wort down it was time to transfer it into my fermenter and pitch my yeast. My yeast of choice here is Omega Lutra which I'm using in dry form which is added once you have a few litres of wort into the fermenter. I then direct the wort flow onto the yeast to rehydrate it quickly so that the action can start fast. In terms of the fermentation, if you do not have the possibility to pressure ferment, then I suggest using the temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, which is the equivalent of 68 degrees Fahrenheit. You will find that at this level, this fermentation will take about two to three days usually, and keep in mind that there is a dry hop that needs to be added before this is fermented out fully. Details of how to do this will be covered shortly. However, I'm using the Kegmenter fermenter and will be using it for pressure fermentation. In this case, I suggest fermenting at 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit with pressure at 12 psi, which is the equivalent of 0.83 bar. After wall transfer, I then added the lid of the Kegmenter securely and then added some pressure via a regulated CO2 supply. Once the pressure was all in, this was then removed and replaced by my spunding valve. I then started to tweak the pressure until the desired pressure level was shown on the spunding valve. Having slightly more pressure than required at the start makes this easy as you can just adjust a little to let some pressure out. This fermentation at around 12 psi of pressure lasted 24 hours so you will need to be reactive to adding your dry hop quickly as those closing gravity points are dropping down. When you do this within a pressure fermentation be sure to remove all pressure and then the lid before adding the dry hop and closing back up. You can then either manually add pressure or simply allow it to build back up naturally. The choice is yours. So let's now look at that dry hop. In this example I'm going to use a hop sock but the procedure is similar with other container type. This starts with boiling the bag. I strongly recommend doing this no matter if the bag has been previously used and cleaned or if it's a brand new one straight out of the packaging. I then add this bag into a clean container and add sanitizer as a further safeguard. This will be the same container that I used to load the hops into. Once the sanitizer has had at least 3 minutes contact time, then this is then removed. After this point I then wash and sanitize my hands and this is repeated if I need to touch the bag after touching anything that is not clean and sanitary. These are very important steps to avoid contamination, which is all too common when it comes to homebrewers making IPAs because of this step. I then carefully add the dry hops with the bag lining the container, being sure that nothing touches the bag except for the hops. Once you have loaded all of your hops into the bag, then be sure to tie a nice strong knot to keep all of the hops contained. Then with a clean and sanitary hand, the hops are then added into the fermenter, being careful not to splash. If you choose to use fake yeast like I did with this brew, then adding your dry hops on day two is advised. If you decide to use regular yeast, then I suggest adding your dry hops when your SG is between 5 to 10 gravity points away from your estimated final gravity. The contact time needed for dry hops is just 3 days to be on the safe side, but you can stretch this out to be 5 days without any concerns in general. You may be okay a little over 5 days, but I would suggest it is not worth the risk, and at least could lead to grassy flavours that take a while to fade. Let's now take a look and talk tasting notes for the finished beer starting with the pour and details. At this point this beer has been in the keg for just over two weeks at an average temperature of 5 degrees Celsius which is the equivalent of 41 degrees Fahrenheit. This has been under 12 psi of pressure which is 0.83 bars for this time and I'm using the same pressure for serving too. No attempts have been made to clear this beer, so what you see is the natural result, though due to its colour and ingredients it's probably not one to worry about trying to clear if you're into that. Here are my tasting notes for this one at the just over two week point. 
Aroma. This beer certainly has a very complex aroma. It is smoky and woody, plus you can also smell the rye and a nice citrus note as well. Flavour. On entry there is a slightly sweet smoky rye flavour that has a piney citrus backing to it. This ends with an assertive yet comfortable level of bitterness that has a citrus aftertaste. Here are my further notes. So far I have not found anyone who has not enjoyed this, but it is fair to say that this is not a regular IPA that is focused on just hops. This is certainly more complex and dare I say more interesting. The flavours involved here change as you go down the glass. My final impression is that this is a complex IPA that brings together the flavours of smoked malt, rye and citrus in a very accessible package for the average drinker, with plenty to savour for the more advanced drinker too. Certainly I'd be very pleased to see anyone else's review of this one in the comments section of this video, along with the amount of time that has been in the Kegel bottle. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!